Hi everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> okay, today we're going to do session five of the Blood Covenant. And I'd like to talk to you, talk with you about the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Okay, because there's some differences and I may have touched base on it before, but now I want to get into detail about it. Okay, so make sure you have your paper and your pen ready because we're going to get started right now. Okay, the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Okay, the Old Covenant was ratified by the blood of bulls. Okay. So it's an animal. We were talking before about an animal being the sacrifice for the covering or the atonement of sins. And we're going to look deeper into that right now. First, let's look at Exodus chapter 24 and verse 8. Exodus 24, 8. Uh, just write the scripture down and then you can look at it later. Write it down. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words one half was thrown against the altar and the other half over the people okay so a lot of times in the Old Testament, they talked about an altar. And in the New Testament, if you remember, they even tell you to reconcile yourselves between your brother if there's anything between you before you get to the altar. So the altar is important in both. Uh, and in this one, it's talking about the blood. Okay, so we're talking mostly about the blood today. And the blood was sprinkled on the altar and the people. So, imagine if you were in the sanctuary and the high priest, just a regular person came up, you know, sacrificed a bull, a bull in front of everybody. Everybody sitting in the congregation, right? And then taking that blood and sprinkling it on the altar and then sp splattering you with it. So basically, that's what they did. So that was not a perfect sacrifice, was it? You know, it's just, uh, it's an atonement and it happens once a year. Okay, one half was thrown against the altar and the other half over the people. And that was in Exodus 24 and verse 8. This is the end of a section of scripture starting in Exodus 19 where the Lord came down on Mount Sinai and gave Moses what we call the Ten Commandments, which actually was probably closer to 100 commandments and judgments. At the end of this, in chapter 24, Moses has confirmed the commandments with the blood. Okay? So you can look at that in chapter 24. I'm not going to read over chapter chapter 24 with you right now. Uh, but we are going to jump way ahead into the past. <laughs> You'll see. Oh, it's in Hebrews 9.19. Okay. Hebrews 9.19 talks about Moses. Right? So that's what I mean way ahead into the past. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Hebrews 9.20 saying, this is the blood of the testament which Moses or which God hath enjoined unto you. So it wasn't a perfect sacrifice. Uh, Jesus hadn't come yet. So that's what they had to do, and there had to be a high priest, okay? Uh, 
let's look at Hebrews, the next verse, Hebrews 9.21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. In verse 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. So that's how crucial, that's how important blood is, okay? That's why you don't drink blood. That's, you know, blood is it. It's it's so important. It's the lifeblood. <clears throat> okay, the New Testament Gonna, the New Testament was ratified by the blood of Jesus, right? The Old Testament was had the blood of bulls and goats. That's all they could have right then. They didn't have a perfect human, you know. In order to save mankind, you have to have a human. But back then, all they had were people born of sin, uh, not perfect, sinful, had to be good. Right? That's why they had the law. And then they uh, it wasn't a perfect sacrifice. They couldn't sacrifice. They didn't want to sacrifice a human. It would have been the same. You know, that's why that's why God said the blood of bulls and goats or calves and, you know, bulls or whatever. So calves and goats. So that's what they had. They had to use an animal. They couldn't use a human because then they would be murdering, <laughs> right? So they have animals. I was talking about before how God had made the animals, right? So he intended for some of those animals to be used for this. He knew Adam was going to, going to sin, so he already has everything covered. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so... In 921, moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. The New Testament was ratified by the blood of Jesus. Luke 22 and verse 20. Okay, are you there? <laughs> Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So, even in the New Testament, blood is necessary, of course. Okay, so it's always about the blood. Uh, and this time it's by with the perfect sacrifice, okay? Born of God. Or you could say, well, it's actually like this because Jesus has no beginning and no end. He's the word of God. God doesn't have a birthday. Uh, he's from eternity to eternity. He's the Alpha and the Omega. There's no beginning and no end, right? So... You can't say that Jesus was created. No, he's not created. Okay? He always existed. He is pre-existent. Okay? In both cases, in the Old Testament versus New Testament, in both cases, Old and New Testament, it was ratified by the blood of a sacrifice. The Old Testament... The Old Covenant was ratified by the blood of bulls and goats. And when was it? It was an annual event, a covering of sins only. So we were talking before about it being a covering, not uh, erasing, okay, through a new birth. Okay, so... In the Old Testament, it's an annual covering. It's just uh, like putting a Band-Aid on a boo-boo. You can't see the boo-boo. You see the Band-Aid. Okay? And then once... Then you take the Band-Aid off, there's a scar there. So you still see, you know, it's still there. 
but <laughs> you can't wear a band-aid forever okay so anyway and <laughs> never mind <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, in the New Testament, the New Covenant was ratified by the better blood of Jesus Christ. One-time event, cleansing of sins, perfect. Okay, why? Because his blood wasn't contaminated through the sin of Adam. That's why God sent the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, he came from God from God's bosom and God always existed that's why he said he wasn't created okay and even a little uh, tidbit Jesus didn't get the name Jesus till the eighth day when he was circumcised okay so the name Jesus wasn't in the Bible until then okay uh, maybe it said you will give the, him the name Jesus but he wasn't named Jesus until the eighth day when he was circumcised so okay he was always the word of god the word became flesh okay <clears throat> the old testament sacrifice provided only an annual covering it did not give eternal life or the new birth mm. It, it did not give fellowship with God. The high priest went once a year in fear into the holiest of holy. It was reverence, but, you know, still, the high priest didn't want to mess up, you know. If he did, that's it. It did not give eternal life or the new birth. It was just an atonement. It was a temporary thing, okay? So that's why it was an annual covering. Annual, yearly, once a year. So there was an expiration date. It didn't last forever. It like said, okay, you did it on the seventh month and on the tenth day, Yom Kippur. Then next year on Yom Kippur, we have to do this again. Okay, so every seventh month and tenth day, let's have this going on. So, and then they have a high priest who is a man. Okay, and that man is born of the blood of Adam. So, he's not the perfect high priest. But they had to have a high priest. And that's probably why he walked in fear. Okay, okay. It, it gave protection to Israel as a nation. It met their physical needs. For example, manna, birds to eat, protection from sun. So God provided their needs like that, okay? Uh, so that their human body and nature and everything wouldn't die. He was caring for their needs uh, with external things. External meaning not internal, what, who's in you now, okay? So it was external needs, right? God was simply Israel's healer, provider, and protector. So God was simply Israel's healer, provider and protector okay uh, next we're going to jump back into Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 29 okay I'm giving you a second <laughs> a few seconds Okay, Leviticus 16.29. So if you're using your gadget, you're probably there already. <laughs> okay. Uh, Leviticus 16.29 says, This shall be a statute forever for you in the seventh month and or on the tenth day of the month. You shall afflict your souls and do no work at all 
Whether a native of your own country or a stranger who sojourns, sojourns among you. So that's the seventh month, tenth day. And that's Yom Kippur we were talking about before. And the next verse, verse 30 says, For on that day the high priest, or the priest I mean, shall make atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. I was just, something just came to me, you know. Uh, the priest is making atonement. It's kind of like just washing you, but it wasn't uh, forever, right? It was just kind of like a temporary thing. But what about baptism? You know, you think about baptism. You know, we go in the water, dirty, let's say. It's kind of like saying that when Jesus died on the cross, it is saying that Jesus died on the cross, you died with him, and when you were buried, you go under, you're buried, the old man's buried, but when you come up, your new creation. And when that new creation happens, that's when Jesus got baptized with the Holy Ghost and endued with power from on high. Okay? He always had the anointing within, but now he has the anointing upon. Okay? And it's like you go in one way, but you come out another way. It's a death, burial, and the resurrection. So when we have the resurrection, we are a new creation. Uh, the, the cross is the cleansing. The cross is the, the blood sacrifice, the cutting, right? So the blood was shed on the cross, and then the death happens. And Satan, or... Uh, well, Satan thought he was doing a good thing, but when Jesus died, he went down to into uh, he went down and he took the keys from Satan, right? So he had to get the authority from Satan. So he ended up bruising his heel on Satan's head, <laughs> right? And. Uh, so I bet you Satan remember that later. He's like, oh, th this is what God was talking about in the garden when I got Adam and Eve to sin. You know, there will be enmity and he'll bruise his heel on my head. Oh, I didn't know it was going to be now. You know, <laughs> so that's what happens. Jesus went down into hell and took the authority from Satan. Okay. So now, uh, he has authority in heaven and on earth and under the earth, right? So he has authority everywhere. He can walk in hell. He can, you know, go anywhere. And he has authority. Okay. I am going to switch. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, starting at the beginning of the chapter. Okay, this is in Leviticus. I'll, I'll just refresh your memory. For in Leviticus uh, 1630, For on that day the priest shall make atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Okay, starting at the beginning of the chapter, it tells the process that, may, that takes place to use the blood of the mercy seat to make atonement for their sins. But since the blood of bulls and goats was only, is only a covering and, not, and cannot really atone for their sins, they have to go through the same ritual every year. Like I said expiration, right? It, it, they have to make it an annual event. And I bet they felt good, you know, after they were done. But 
as time progressed, they're like, oops, I messed up just now. What happened? <laughs> I have to wait till the next one. Think about that. Oops, I messed up. Oh, I have to wait for the next one now. You know, we have First John 1, 9, right? That if thou, if you shall confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So it's an eternal uh, blood covering uh, to wash you clean, okay? The blood of Jesus provided an eternal covering. Oh. <laughs> okay, Hebrews 9.11. But, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. With the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation. Right? Because... Like I said, you know, Jesus is from eternity to eternity. There's no birth date. He wasn't created. The angels were created, were created uh, when we were created um, out of the dust of the earth, uh, born of Adam. Those which are born of the flesh are flesh, and those which are born of the spirit are spirit right so now that we're born of god we are a spirit and god is a spirit and he gives birth to his own kind and he is a spirit so that's why we're born of the spirit um so but christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. So you understand, it's not of this creation. We're born of the Spirit, right? And in fact, when Gabriel came and uh, got Mary's consent, he uh, sent the word and then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So that word, the word is spirit and it is life, right? So the word is spirit and the word of God and God are one of the same, okay? So when you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the word of God is God. So if it's God the Father, God the Son, or God the Father, God the Word, okay? So that's why even in the Old Testament, uh, when maybe an angel of the Lord would speak the Word of God, it was because the Word that was coming out of the angel's mouth, just like when you speak the Word of God, it's God coming out of your mouth because the word you speak is spirit and it is life, okay? So when we speak the word of God, it is God and he's fulfilling his word on this planet. So when he uses us as an oracle, or when he uses the prophet in the Old Testament to speak the word of God, since the word was spoken out of the mouth of the prophet, it could be performed in the earth. So it had to be first spoken. That's just like when you got saved, you first believe with your heart, and when you confess with your mouth, that confession was made unto salvation. So it's important to speak the word of God. It's important to, when you give thanks, when you're eating uh, your meal, to not pray with your head but to pray with your mouth because your confession is made and your your uh when you pray for your food you're thanking god for your food please bless and sanctify the food right it's being blessed and sanctified because you're first believing it with your heart and your confession is making it blessed and sanctified because you're first believing it and god's going out 
and sanctifying it, right? So you understand that, right? Okay, so that's why it's so important to speak the word of God and to speak it with authority, knowing that God's going to perform his word with signs following, right? So you speak the word of God with signs following. I didn't know I was going to say that, but hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so in Hebrews 9, 13, for the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer Sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the pur purifying of the flesh. So that's the, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh. And just before that, Uh, in verse 12, it says, Not with the blood of bulls and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption, right? Eternal. That's it. That's forever. So not with the blood of bulls and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Okay? As we know, the priest before in the Old Testament went in fearful, hoping he wouldn't mess up. Right? Because he was already born of sin. But then, Jesus... Could, he entered in the most holy place once for all and stayed there. Well, <laughs> well, stayed there. Having obtained eternal redemption, okay? So um, that's why we can go into the holiest place because we are the body of Christ. That's why when we pray, we should know that we can go right to the throne room and make our petition. Okay, let's look at, uh, once again, Hebrews 9.13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. The law and the old covenant was only a shadow. All the law and the first covenant was a shadow. Hebrews 10.1. <clears throat> so Hebrews 10.1 says, For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come. Talking about the coming of Jesus. Not quite there yet. They weren't quite there. But that was what they were talking about. Since the law has but a shadow of the good things have come to come. Hebrews 10.1 also says, for since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifice that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. So we've already been saying that it can never by the same sacrifice that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near next point the sacrifices could never make man perfect hebrews 10:2 otherwise would they no have Cease to be offered since the worshipers having once been cleansed would no longer have any consciousness of sins. Well, let me just say this, that if in the Old Testament they just had an annual cleansing, it wasn't forever gone, right? So, 
they didn't have the blood washing away an evil conscience. Okay? But with Jesus, the blood of Jesus washed you from an evil conscience. The sin consciousness. Conscien consciousness. <laughs> okay? It's bad to be sin conscious. Because you can't get anything from God if you are sin conscious when you go before God. You can't go before God when you are sin conscious. The blood bulls and goats did not cleanse the conscience. In other words, it did not take away the sin consciousness from man. Everything, next point, everything centers around the high priest under the old covenant. When the high priest failed, the people had no approach to God. That's it. I mean, if the high priest messed up, there's no, there's no uh, approach to God now. You have to wait till next year. Maybe it'll work. The high priest was an earthly mediator, born of sin, standing between the nation and God. The next, the new covenant left no trace. The new covenant, the new covenant left no trace of sin in man. Man stands with no condemnation in God's presence. That's why you don't go to God sin conscious saying that's my sin. No, because the one that did it died. And if you're saying the one that did it is living now, Christ didn't do it. Okay? So put, it, put off the deeds of the old man. Uh, put to death the, the deeds of the old man. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth which means you put the death, the deeds of the old man, okay? The, the members is not talking about body parts. It's talking about the deeds of the old man, okay? Put to death or mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, which means they're not yours. The person that did it died, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, man stands with no condemnation in God's presence. Hebrews 8.1 There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Romans 5.1 Being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. Romans 5.1 Being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And what does justified mean? Justified means just as if you've never sinned. Okay? So it's just as if you've never sinned. So, don't remember the sin because it's not your sin. Because the one that did it died, right? Okay. Next point. Everything as in the old covenant, in the new covenant, centers around the new high priest. The difference is our high priest never fails his people... He will never violate the covenant. Okay, God is faithful. He will never violate the covenant. He's not going to take back his word because him and his word are one and he has integrity in his word. Okay, so if he said it, that's it. 
Jesus even said it to the people before. He said, didn't we say that you are gods? <laughs> okay. Uh, next, our high priest came to this earth, but was sinless. And that is the Old Testament versus the New Testament. Okay. The old high priest, sinful man, uh, born of sin, not perfect, had an animal, used it as a sacrifice, but it was only temporary. It couldn't do the job totally. It was only a shadower type, and the blood was just making atonement of the sin or covering the sin up. And the high priest at the time was the one who can go before the nation and God and be the representative or the spokesperson. Um, but the, the high priest back, back then was sinful man, you know, born of sin. And then that's it you know he can mess up Jesus never messes up right he is without sin <clears throat> okay let's look uh, Hebrews 9 14 how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, <clears throat> purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I'll read that one more time in case you were turning there. <clears throat> Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So it's purging your conscience. The Old Testament, as we know, it provided only an annual covering on the Day of Atonement. And you probably remember when that is. Seventh month, tenth day, right? July, right? July 10th. So, the Old Testament provided an annual covering on the Day of Atonement. The Old Testament high priest entered the holiest once, only once a year. New Testament obtained an eternal redemption for us. 